Yes. Our panel's back. Jelena Maxwell, Senior Director of Progressive Programming at Sirius XM and an MSNBC political analyst. And Yu Hewitt, host of the Yu Hewitt radio show and MSNBC political analyst. Yu, what do you think about the name changes that are being proposed? Uh, some already decided, some we're told considering it. Does it make a cultural statement and is it the right thing to do in your judgment? Sports are supposed to bring us together, Al. Uh, it's one of those places where race and religion and ethnicity doesn't matter. I'm a hardcore Indians fan. I bled out in 2016, 1997, 1995. They never won a ring in my lifetime. So I'm a hardcore Indians fan. This might divide. Here's my Notre Dame Irish, uh, the Fighting Irish. This doesn't divide. So today, when manager of the Cleveland Indians, Terry Francona, said, we got to rethink the name, they were basically saying, we're going to go back to the Cleveland Blues, which was the original team, and I'd be happy with that. I'd like them to name them the Lakers. But if a name divides, it ought to meet its demise, because sports are supposed to bring us together. Zelina, your response to that, do, how do you see this? Is this an important cultural change, and uh, does it make a statement? I mean, it's not the most important thing going on right now, but I do think it's re a reflection of the racial reckoning that is happening throughout the country. So when you're when you're taking away the name Aunt Jemima, when you're changing the names of sports teams, that's a reflection of something else going on in our culture. And I think what's happening is it's actually not good for the bottom line to be divisive, to Hugh's point. I can agree with that but also to be racially insensitive, or dare I say racist, Rev. So I think it's really a good sign and a sign of progress that major corporations are taking the side of racial equity and inclusion as opposed to division and racism. Now, a lot of athletes talk a big game or even give their money, but WNBA star Maya Moore really put her money where her mouth is leaving the league to pursue justice for wrongfully convicted Jonathan Irons. And she inspired others to follow her example. Is this the kind of action we should be demanding of athletes? Uh, she took off a whole season and they don't get paid like uh, the NBA players and really fought for this young man who did get out. She won and he was wrongfully incarcerated. This kind of... Uh, of example of athletes really putting it on the line. What is this a good thing and a good example? Is this a role model example to young Americans of all races? You, uh, I think it's great that she's doing what she's doing. Uh, Jarvis Juice Landry of the Browns, Miles Garrett of the Browns, they've both done uh, community outreach programs that have gotten big play in Cleveland and then among those of us who are Cleveland sports nuts. And I think that is a terrific use of their time. But I think you can do both. Uh, I, don't want, I don't want Juice or OBJ to retire from the Browns. I don't want Miles Garrett to go off and be a full-time uh, social justice activist. You can do both. And uh, certainly athletes from the very... Roberto Clemente died uh, taking uh, relief supplies to Central America after an earthquake. There's, there's a long history of professional athletes doing great things with their platforms. I applaud them all. Zelina, as we see athletes and entertainers supporting police reform and, and, and lending their celebrity to real uh, moves around changing laws, isn't the priority, though, to make sure the laws are changed? The cultural statements are very important and help. But at the end of the day, we also need to make permanent change in the actual way we execute governing in this country. Absolutely, Rev. I think that it's always a, mu a multi-part strategy. So you start out with raising awareness and changing the culture and public um, opinion around certain issues so that you then can put pressure on your elected leaders so that they can then reform legislation, pass reform legislation. This is incredibly important. And one of the things in this moment that has been unique and important compared to previous iterations of the Black Lives, Lives Matter movement in the past decade is that they immediately moved towards congressional legislation. And there was a policing reform bill. Sure, it's not everything you would want, but it's certainly a great first series of steps to address specific concerns. I think the most critical thing about this part of the movement, this, this time and this moment, 
is the fact that the protesters are being very specific about what they want. And I'm glad to see some of that take shape in terms of legislation. That is exactly where they're at. Well, let me thank both of you, you, you and Zerlina Maxwell for being with me.